Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody had a nice Christmas. Uh, today we continue our series of Operation Inherent Resolve press briefings uh, to provide a uh, better understanding on uh, what's going on over there. Uh, today we're joined by British Army Major General Felix Gedney, Deputy Commander, Strategy and Support Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve. Uh, he joins us today uh, from Baghdad, Iraq. He only has 45 minutes, does have a hard stop. Uh, so one of two deputy commanders, he's focused on looking at the fight ahead, specifically in the areas of force development, helping our partner forces on the ground transition to sustainable organizations that are capable of ensuring the defeat of ISIS. Uh, we'll start with a quick communications check, sir. How do you hear us? I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? Sir, we hear you great. Please take it away. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to speak with you today, and I'd like to start by wishing you all a happy holidays. I'll first provide an operational update for Syria and Iraq, and with this being our last briefing for 2017, I'll also discuss this year's overall progress in the fight against ISIS and the way ahead for the coalition in 2018. In Syria, the fight very much continues against ISIS terrorists who still present a threat to the people of Syria, as well as to the region and our home nations. The Syrian Democratic Forces have therefore kept up their advance against ISIS in the Kaaba and Middle Euphrates river valleys. The SDF have isolated the remaining pockets of ISIS militants along the east bank of the Euphrates river and are methodically clearing areas to the east in the desert along the border with Iraq. In the course of the last week, the SDF, with coalition strike support, repelled ISIS attacks in the vicinity of Abu Hamam, with more than a dozen enemy killed. In total, coalition forces have conducted 23 strikes against ISIS targets in eastern Syria during the past week, destroying ISIS vehicles, weapons, explosives and a command and control centre. As we have seen this week in Damascus and in various other places in Syria, such as Palmyra, over the past several months, ISIS retains the capability to launch successful surprise offensives and retake uh, territories from Assad forces. The Syrian regime has failed to demonstrate its ability to prevent the resurgence of ISIS on their own soil. Additionally, the Syrian Democratic Forces have clashed with ISIS several times in the past week and the coalition continues to support the SDF on the ground and from the air. While the Russians falsely claimed victory over ISIS in Syria early this month, we, the coalition, have remained focused on ensuring the lasting defeat of ISIS in the region. Such an enduring victory over ISIS requires the global coalition's continued commitment to the security and stabilization of liberated areas. In Raqqa, for example, the SDF and the Raqqa Internal Security Forces are conducting an important and dangerous mission. They're bravely searching for and removing the many exp improvised explosive devices and booby traps left behind by ISIS terrorists so local residents can return to their homes and get back to their lives. Despite this overwhelming threat, areas are returning to normalcy as the Raqqa Civil Council, SDF and RISIF call out areas as safe to return. Such efforts to establish safety and security help pave the way for civilian-led efforts to address local needs. While northern neighbourhoods in Raqqa are still uninhabitable, conditions are improving daily in southern neighbourhoods, with civilians returning to core tasks of rebuilding homes, sweeping roads and even opening shops. Through coordination and partnership, the locally governed Raqqa Civil Council is working to get children back in the classroom, a key priority in an area that has not seen formal education for five years. Vetting and hiring qualified teachers, rehabilitating classrooms, it's developing at pace, reopening multiple schools. Over 830 metric tonnes of humanitarian aid have been delivered to more than 40 locations around the city of Raqqa and local councils are facilitating the delivery of aid to civilians. Just last week, 
medical equipment was delivered to the Raqqa Civil Council's new medical facility in Katuni, Syria. These positive developments offer hope for the future of Syria. But we know there is still more work to be done. It's for this reason, for the continued safety of the region and the world, that our coalition will remain committed to the mission in Syria until ISIS no longer poses a threat and a UN-backed peace process is implemented to ensure lasting stability in the country. Meanwhile, in Iraq, the Iraqi security forces continue hunting down ISIS remnants hiding throughout the country. For instance, in the past week, in and around Anbar province, as well as Baghdad, our Iraqi partners reported clearing dozens of improvised explosive devices, as well as mortars, ammunition and ISIS safe houses. In Hawija province and the Hamrin Mountains, the ISF reported the arrest of multiple ISIS terrorists and clearance of more than 50 IEDs. These are but a few examples of ongoing efforts to find and eradicate ISIS militants. Both the ISIS, ISF and our coalition forces are keenly aware ISIS is an adaptive and patient enemy. We know they may attempt to work in smaller cells and they most certainly will continue attempting their acts of terror whenever and wherever possible. However, the ISF's ongoing clearance operations should dispel any ideas that ISIS can simply vanish into the population they once terrorised and be forgotten about. On the contrary, our pursuit of these terrorists is as tenacious and determined as ever. And we will continue supporting our Iraqi partners as they work to bring these terrorists to justice and protect the people of Iraq from any kind of ISIS resurgence. To that end, the coalition will continue to partner with the ISF, advising, training and equipping them in their efforts to fully eliminate ISIS as a threat to Iraq. We will tailor our support based on Iraqi requirements, with a particular emphasis on the capabilities needed to hold and secure the liberated areas. That means more training and support to the Iraqi police and border guards, for instance. As with Syria, the coalition measures our success not only in our partners' battlefield victories, but also in our stabilisation efforts. While there is much work to be done, we are seeing positive signs in the long-term effort to help Iraqis recover from life under ISIS. Across Iraq, internally displaced persons are returning home. And for the first time, we have seen the number of returnees climb above the number of those still displaced. Just over 2.8 million people have returned and just under 2.8 million remain displaced. We're encouraged by this positive trend and the coalition stands together with the government of Iraq and international and non-governmental partners as we all work to enable a security and stabilization that will allow all Iraqis to return home. This effort is now decisive in our campaign to defeat ISIS. More signs of progress are seen throughout the country. Ambar University's academic buildings have been rehabilitated, providing renewed hope and opportunities for thousands of students. The UN Development Programme has helped enable the rehabilitation of 6,000 homes in Ramadi and Fallujah, an effort which also provides jobs for local Iraqis. The rehabilitation of water treatment plants in Mosul is providing clean water, drinking water for hundreds of thousands of residents. Such recent developments are, once again, positive signs of things to come. The need remains great, however, so the combined efforts of the Global Coalition will remain vital as we move forward into 2018. As we close out the year, we should look back and consider the progress that has been made in the past 12 months. During 2017, over 60,000 square kilometres were liberated from ISIS across Iraq and Syria, meaning that more than 98% of the land once claimed by the terrorist group has been returned to the people. More than 4.5 million Iraqis and Syrians were liberated from ISIS oppression during the year, bringing the full total liberated to approximately 7.7 .7 million people now free from ISIS's barbaric activity. We've been taking something away from the enemy every day in 2017. 
Over the course of the year, we all but eliminated their ability to draw illegal revenue from the oil field once under their control. We've decimated their ability to publish propaganda and recruit foreign fighters. And we've targeted their leadership, taking out approximately 130 ISIS leaders and high value targets during the year. The coalition started 2017 with 67 member organizations and we've concluded the year with 74. That's 70 nations plus the Arab League, NATO, Interpol and the EU, together demonstrating the international resolve to defeat ISIS and most importantly to prevent the return of this most evil terrorist organization. The coalition must also remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the global war to defeat ISIS in 2017, including hundreds of brave Iraqis and Syrians who gave their lives for their nations, alongside the 14 service members from coalition nations. The suffering that ISIS has brought to many Iraqis and Syrians is witnessed in the discovery of mass graves and the mass IED emplacements designed to target returning civilians. We remember all of their sacrifices and we honour their memory by remaining committed to this historic mission. And with that, I'll now take your questions. Thank you, General. Uh, we're going to start off with Tom Bowman. One and one follow-up, please. Uh, General, I wonder if you could talk about reports we've been hearing that more ISIS fighters are now heading west, presumably toward Damascus. And you also said that you don't think the uh, Syrian government can deal with counterattacks by ISIS. You talked about Palmyra. So I'm wondering, once uh, the SDF cleans out the uh, Euphrates River Valley, do you intend uh, the coalition on working more with the Russians and even the Syrians in cleaning up ISIS to the west of the Euphrates? Well, let me take the last part of that question first. Um, the coalition will continue to deconflict with the Russian forces. Uh, we do that effectively um, in Syria and it's working. Um, but to come to your initial point, uh, we are seeing the movement of uh, limited numbers of ISIS militants uh, westwards. Uh, they seem to be moving with impunity through regime held uh, territory, uh, showing that the regime is clearly either unwilling or unable uh, to defeat Daesh within their borders. Uh, we're seeing those in and around the area of Atamf, and we're dealing with every time we see them, uh, we are taking those individuals off the battlefield. Uh, our intention is to uh, finish off the defeat of ISIS in that last area that they hold uh, in the area of the Merv uh, in southern Syria. Again, I'm wondering if, what about west of the Euphrates? Once you clear out that area, will you redouble your efforts? Will you help the Russians? Will you clean out those last remnants of ISIS? Um, well, we'll continue to deconflict with the Russians, but we've got no intention to operate in areas that are currently um, held by the regime. Adrian Reuters. Uh, sure, General. Uh, as you know probably better than I do, just killing militants uh, won't solve the problem of ISIS. And uh, historically, the coalition, maybe with the exception of Australia, has been pretty poor in dealing with insurgency, you know, whether it's Vietnam, Iraq, or Afghanistan. Um, in this instance, as the number of militants decrease and as their territory decreases, how have they sort of moved towards an insurgency campaign and how are you planning on sort of, you know, working your counterinsurgency strategy out given that there is the Syrian regime in many of these territories that you've retaken um, or, or they're close by in the territories that you've retaken? Um, well, you, your premise is entirely correct. We won't judge our success by the number of people that we've killed during this campaign. We have generated an opportunity now through military operations to complete the defeat of ISIS. And as I said uh, during my pitch, um, the decisive part of this campaign is now the non-military lines of effort. We'll continue the military lines. We'll continue to hunt down and find those remnants of ISIS and those sleeper cells are anyone attempting to mount an insurgency. And we're pretty confident that our partner forces will be able to deal with that threat as it emerges. But we'll also redouble our efforts to support those non-military lines of effort and particularly the immediate stabilization 
uh, that will show the people of Iraq and Syria that they're better off under their uh, legitimate governance than they are under ISIS. And just to follow up, I mean, you have a pretty good idea of uh, troop numbers. How many uh, foreign or coalition troops are there in Iraq, and specifically how many U.S. troops are there in Iraq currently? Well, I'm not going to go into the detail of numbers. Um, the, uh, the numbers are a matter of public record, and I know the DOD will be give you, able to give you the U.S. ones. Um, but what I see, will say about numbers, and this is really important, is that we have no more troops than we need to complete this mission. Uh, and as soon as we can, we will move people out of theatre when the job is done. Tara, Military Times. Hi, uh, Tara Kopp, Military Times. Thanks for doing this. Um, uh, recent reports suggest that the Russians are actually, instead of departing Syria, are actually building permanent naval and air bases and striking a deal with Damascus to be part of the long-term presence in Syria. Uh, how will the coalition deal with uh, maintaining the peace in Syria if there's not more interaction with the Russians and a willingness to uh, work together on a, a long-term plan? Well, I'm not going to make comment about any long-term plans. You'd have to ask either Russia or Damascus that. What I would say, uh, as I've already mentioned, our deconfliction with uh, Russian forces is effective uh, and it's proving successful, and we intend to keep doing that. All right. Um, a, a lot of your initial pitch focused on Raqqa. Do you have an estimate as to how many civilians remain in Raqqa? And will the coalition's efforts really remain focused on uh, fortifying Raqqa? for the short term? Could you just repeat the last bit of your question? Will the uh, coalition's efforts fo really focus on fortifying Raqqa in the short term? And how many uh, civilians do you estimate remain in Raqqa? OK, so I, I thought I had that. So, so we've got no intention to fortify Raqqa. Uh, the effort uh, within the city of Raqqa right now is to stabilize it uh, after the liberation of that city. Uh, the most important part of that stabilization effort is currently the counter IED effort to remove the IEDs and booby traps that ISIS have left in pretty much every building that they inhabited. The Raqqa Civil Council have managed the return of uh, a number of people and some of those southern neighborhoods now are blossoming back into life. It will be quite a long time, though, before that city is safe for the whole of the residents to return. Uh, do you have any estimates on how many civilians remain in Raqqa or have returned? Um, I, I, I haven't got an estimate for you. We can follow up on that later on. Barbara Starr, CNN. Uh, sir, can we go back to some of the things you were saying about ISIS moving westward? I believe you said that they are moving with impunity into regime-held areas. So I'm not clear how the coalition can say it will stay to defeat ISIS when you also say, with respect, that you have no intention of moving into these regime-held areas. Um, and if they are moving into these areas where you're not going to go, what is your assessment of their ability to establish a safe haven there and potentially further export terrorism? So you're right, I did say that uh, from our point of view, it seems to be us uh, that uh, ISIS are moving through regime areas with impunity. Uh, we will remain committed to defeating ISIS in the areas that are currently controlled uh, by our partner forces in Syria. And we would call on the Syrian regime to clear ISIS from those areas that are currently under their, their control. And to follow up, thank you. Again, overall, what is your current calculation on the ability of ISIS to export uh, operatives, financing, uh, planning of operations uh, outside of Iraq and Syria 
and your current calc your calculation on that capability and your calculation on how many ISIS operatives you really believe are left. Well, let me take the first bit. I know that our spokesman has uh, put out some numbers on uh, numbers that might be left, and I'm not going to add anything to what he said. Um, ISIS remains a threat uh, in the region. It remains a threat to our homelands as well. But the military operations here over the past years uh, have uh, hit them very hard. We've taken an enormous amount of territory for them. We've killed large numbers of ISIS militants, uh, and we continue to do so. So we have severely degraded their ability to conduct operations outside of Iraq and Syria, as well as degrading their capability in country. Lori Mulroy, uh, Kyrgyzstan 24. Thank you, General, for doing this. Um, at, at Astana last week, at the Astana talks, both the Russian and Syrian representatives said that it was time for the U.S. to leave Syria. How do you view those comments and what's your response to it? Well, well, the time for the coalition, I'm only going to speak on behalf of the coalition, not the U.S., the time for the coalition uh, to leave Syria will be when we have defeated ISIS in the areas that we control. You just said telling them no, in, in essence. Um, uh, right now, we have not completed the defeat of ISIS, uh, and it would not be the time to leave, correct? And you mentioned in your opening statement that ISIS in Iraq was disappearing into the local population. Is that a serious issue? Have you any estimate of how much of that is going on? Um, I'm not going to give you an estimate. It's clearly a serious issue. Um, ISIS, we believe, will attempt to mount some form of insurgency. However, um, the ISF operations are proving to be very successful. Uh, they're finding ISIS amongst the population and they're taking action against them. It's too early to say at the moment how much threat uh, that potential insurgency might face in coming years. What we do know, though, is that the, uh, the Iraqi security forces are proving to be very adept at dealing with it. And we have absolute confidence that they'll be able to do so in future. Lucas Fox. General, with ISIS largely defeated in Iraq and Syria, although still a threat, as you say, are more assets going to the pursuit of the ISIS leader, Baghdadi? Well, well, as I've said, um, and I'll reiterate, ISIS are not defeated here. Uh, and despite the liberation of Iraq announced by the Prime Minister Badi, we need to make sure we remain absolutely focused and continue this mission to defeat ISIS. In terms of Baghdadi, um, we have no intention to put any more assets to find him. Um, we obviously would like to find him, and when we do, you'll find out about it. <laughs> Cheers. Sylvie with AFP. Um, hello, sir. Uh, you said that um, ISIS is becoming uh, is a very adaptive and patient enemy, and that it's it's uh, transforming in uh, smaller units. Um, and you also said that uh, you don't intend to follow them in uh, zones that you don't control, that the coalition doesn't control now. So, if they uh, just disappear in uh, Syria, how are you going to defeat them? Well, we'll continue to operate in the areas liberated uh, by our partner forces in Syria. Uh, and we call upon the Syrian regime to deal with ISIS in the areas under their control. Okay, Elizabeth with ABC. Hi, General. Um, how many fighters do you assess have moved westward, and what, how confident are you that Russia will indeed go after those forces if you're seeing that they're unable or unwilling to, uh, to go after them now? Well, I think you'd have to address that 
question really to either to uh, the Russians or the Syrians. Um, we've clearly seen a, a lot of um, operations by pro-regime forces, uh, Russian-backed Syrian forces, uh, over to the east of the river, uh, the Euphrates River. Um, we question some of the uh, effectiveness of some of those operations. Uh, but in terms of their future intent, uh, that's not something I'm going to be able to answer, I'm afraid. And how many fighters do you think have moved west? Um, it, it, it would be impossible for me to tell you. I can tell you that we continue to find every day uh, we're intercepting and taking off the battlefield uh, small numbers of fighters that are moving uh, through the battle space in areas that we control. Stripes. Uh, thanks, General. Um, how, how often are you seeing the ISIS fighters around Atanif, where you, you said that you guys are taking them? Out. Uh, is it like a, a daily occurrence where these guys are getting through there? And is there still uh, regime-backed militias in that area as well? So there's a relatively routine occurrence of um, uh, fighting against ISIS militants that are moving through the area around Attamp, where coalition back partner forces are operating. Um, indeed, I'll uh, draw your attention to a press release today from Sajitiv over one uh, such operation to clear uh, some cave areas. Um, can you repeat the, the other part of the question? There had been uh, you know, several instances uh, where there were uh, Syrian regime-backed militias you know, kind of in the no-go zone around uh, Atanif, is that, are there still regime militias in that area? Uh, again, uh, I'm not too sure I can tell you. We're aware, we're aware of the areas that the regime control, but I'm not too sure I have full sight on all of the regime forces that are operating in those areas. Yeah, hi, General. Uh, Richard Sisk, Military.com. In regards to the successes of the coalition that you recounted uh, this year, is that the result of the uh, long-term strategy decided by the coalition to partner with local forces? Or is it uh, pretty much this year the acceleration of the successes? Is that due to the uh, uh, some of the changes in tactics that, uh, that gave field commanders more latitude in targeting, etc. So I think it's a, uh, a combination of, of a large number of things. Uh, but, but most importantly, it, it is indeed a success of a strategy of working by, with and through partner forces. Um, in Iraq, uh, the Iraqi security forces had a rapid series of successes after Mosul, uh, Talafar, Hawija, uh, Ambar. Uh, and each time, of course, they're building on their, their success with more experience and expertise. I mean, they're a very effective uh, fighting force now. Lori? Yes, sir. Are you concerned uh, regarding the, you said the most important thing is to prevent the return of ISIS. Many people have called for political reforms in Iraq, which don't seem to be forthcoming. Are you concerned that the lack of adequate representation for the Sunni Arabs in Iraq might facilitate the return of ISIS? Well, what you're asking me is, is really a political question, and I'm a soldier, not a politician. What I would point out to you, though, is that uh, the people of Iraq um, have liberated their country through national unity. All parts of the nation coming together to drive out this evil terrorist group. Within the coalition, we hope that that national unity uh, will go forward as much as it does in the security side as it will in the political. Could you comment on the role of the Peshmerga in the fight against ISIS and plans you have for training them in the future? Yes, of course. Well, all, as I said, all parts of the Iraqi security forces, including the Peshmerga, played a hugely valuable role in, um, in defeating ISIS over the past years. 
Um, we'll continue to uh, train Peshmerga for as long as the government of Iraq wants us to. Thank you. Last question on the back. Thank you, General. Jeff Selden from DOA. You mentioned the number of ISIS fighters that are being taken off the battlefield. Do you have a sense of what is happening to them? Are they being killed? Are they, and if they're captured, what is being done with them? Do you have a sense of what the Russians or the pro-Syrian regime forces are doing with their fighters as well? And to what extent have ISIS fighters perhaps managed to leave the Iraq and Syria theater prior to these last couple of months? Is, is the numbers, the decrease in the numbers of fighters due to the bombing campaign and the advances of the Syrian Democratic Forces, the Iraqi Security Forces, or because they were able to move, move with impunity in some areas, was there an exodus that, that you think has taken place? Well, the first, first thing, as I've said, I'm not going to answer for the, the Syrian regime or the Russians. Um, I can tell you that we, uh, we are seeing uh, a number of uh, ISIS militants. In particular, we've seen their leadership, their leadership deserting the battlefield uh, and leaving the battlefield at the earliest opportunity. We're interdicting them, uh, and I think we've been relatively successful in that task. We have seen an uptick as we've squeezed ISIS into their sort of last remaining uh, stronghold in the Middle Euphrates Valley. We've seen a, uh, an, an uptick in the numbers of people moving because of the numbers of interdictions we're doing. And I can't tell you that none have managed to get through our grip, but, but I would tell you not many. So we'll do one more question, Tom Bowman. Hey, General, uh, Defense Secretary Mattis had said that U.S. forces will stay in Syria to prevent the return of ISIS 2.0. Um, Heading back to the issue of ISIS uh, west of the Euphrates, how can you prevent that? How can you prevent the return of ISIS 2.0 if you're not going to work to eliminate ISIS west of the Euphrates and leave it up to folks who you say are now unable or unwilling to go after ISIS? Explain that to us. Well, as I've said to you already, uh, uh, the Syrian regime must be held responsible for clearing and defeating ISIS in the areas that they control. Uh, our part in this as a coalition will continue to support our partner forces in northern Syria in the defeat of ISIS. And that includes, uh, once we've liberated territory, supporting those forces that will maintain security, and particularly internal security forces and border guards, uh, after the liberation. What if they don't take out ISIS? Then what? You just throw your hands up? Uh, well, I, I think you'd have to address that to the Syrian regime. We can only defeat ISIS in the areas that our partner forces control. Lucas? General, how would you describe the threat from Iranian-backed forces, some of whom have threatened U.S. and coalition troops on the ground? Um, well, I guess you're talking about those um, Iranian-backed uh, militia. Uh, and let's be clear, the, the Popular Mobilization Front, which is that uh, umbrella group for all of those militias, some Iranian-backed, uh, some religious organization, played a valuable part in the defeat of ISIS in this country. Uh, now, while we haven't supported them directly, we've operated in the same battle space, uh, and effectively, uh, we've had a good cooperation through the government of Iraq with those forces. And we hope that cooperation will continue in future. I talked about national unity. It was national uni unity that liberated this country. And we hope that will continue in the security of the country in future. What about some of these forces that don't want unity but want to attack US troops? What are you doing to deal with those forces? Well, that, that is a, uh, a question for the government of Iraq. Prime Minister Abadi. Um, is working with those groupings to make sure they remain under the control of the government of Iraq. The government of Iraq, as the state government, must retain a monopoly on the uh, legitimate use of violence in this country. Okay. Uh, General, thank you very much for your time today. Do you have any closing remarks for the group? Well, well yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, I would say that 
We've had a very successful 2017 in the military campaign. We haven't created a win, we've created an opportunity. Um, coalition of 70 nations and four organisations will continue in our fight against ISIS. Much of that campaign will now focus on the non-military lines, but we're absolutely committed to continuing this job until we've defeated ISIS and lift, lifted that horrific shadow off the people of Iraq and Syria. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your time. And please pass on uh, our thoughts and prayers to all those who are deployed and away from their families. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's engagement. Have a great day and a safe and happy new year.